Hello, my friend. Welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be taking this acrylic pour that I did that was a Dutch pour with balloon kiss flowers, and I'm going to transform it using a variety of techniques into this beautiful dragonfly garden. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. So this is probably one of my most favorite things to do. Take an acrylic pour painting and transform it into a different, a whole different new painting. So I figured I would use some of my stencils today. The easiest way to get an image onto a canvas is to stencil it on and then come back in and hand paint over that stencil. It takes away a lot of erasing and a lot of... Uh, frustration for me. So I love to use my stencils. However, when using a stencil on a canvas, it can be a little tricky because the canvas is not a hard surface. So you want to make sure you take your time, use a sponge, pounce the paint up and down nice and slow and get into all the cracks and crevices. This way, you know, if you take your time, that canvas won't bounce as much as if you try to go fast. Now, there's parts of this video where I've sped up. You're going to see that in a second here. And it looks like I'm going super fast, but this is real time. I'm just taking my time with it and slowly pouncing that bleached titanium color on the canvas. All of the acrylic paints that I use today are from Color Art, the new Vivid Intense line except for this here uh, unbleached titanium. So I'm taking the stencil off nice and slow and look at that, a beautiful image on the canvas. So now we're gonna get started with painting it. So again, all of these paints are the brand new Vivid Intense paints. They are a fluid acrylic, no shimmer in them, just straight color and they are extremely pigmented. I am in love with them. Golden is taking a back seat to these paints now, and I can't wait. She's going to be coming out with a lot more colors. So in the description of this video, there is a discount for you to give them a try. They are great for painting on canvas like this. However, they are magnificent for acrylic pouring, the bloom technique, everything that we do here in the fluid art community. So I'm using some of the yellow and some of the orange to shade in my first mushroom. I'm going to be using some of the uh, dioxazine purple that I lightened a bit with some of the titanium white and added a little bit of the magenta in to get a nice violet color. So I'm going to be shading these in here. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to move on to the next step. Now I'm just going to go around the edge of the mushrooms with a little bit of white just to give a little bit of highlight to them. So this flesh color that I used on the stem of the mushroom and now on these little circles is actually a global paint color. So I just wanted to make note of that because that is not in the new set. So now I got the stencil out. I'm going to be pouncing on some leaves all over the place, 
This is going to be such a fun little garden. This is for a very special client of mine who saw the first one I did like this that was a butterfly garden and wanted one commissioned for herself. So this is where we're going with this dragonfly garden. When it comes to removing this stencil, make sure you go nice and slow. Don't rip it off fast. You can smudge the paint like that. So this next stencil, which is also a vine with leaves, was a little wonky on the canvas, so I decided to tape it down with some stencil tape. You want to make sure when stenciling on canvas that that stencil lays nice and flat. Next step, each of the leaves I have painted or stenciled on, I'm going to take some of the new Vivid Intense. This is the Thalo Green I'm about to lay down right now. I'm gonna put a little layer of that on first. These are trans semi-transparent, so I like that about them. You'll be able to see some of that green poking through. Then I'm going to come in with some of the green yellow Vivid Intense. And I'm going to lightly Put it around the edges and kind of just blend it out a little bit. That would give a nice little highlight. So each and every single leaf on this canvas is going to be done this way. Okay, just kind of blend it out a little bit. Nothing fancy. Just like that. So we'll do this one next. I'll wipe off my brush just with a napkin. Add the phthalo green. And I kind of alter the stencil a little bit, like there is that little gap there. I'm going to fill that in. I don't want that there. I'll have to create another leaf coming off of here to mask that but anyway we got this done here then i'll wipe off my brush on a napkin dip it into the yellow green and again first i'll put a little bit there and blend it up like that Right, and then we'll do our leaf. That's what I'm going to do. To all of the leavery you just saw me uh, create with the stencils. Leavery. That's not even. Leafery? I don't think that's even a word. So let me show you the next thing that I am going to be doing, which is kind of cool. So this is called an embossing pen. Um, it's kind of like 
we'll say a sizing medium in a pen. Um, I'm not sure what embossing fluid is, but it's a sticky substance that you lay down, then you sprinkle some embossing powder over the top of it, heat it up, and it melts it. So what I wanna use it for is to create some really fine lines in between these little areas here on the mushroom and around the circles. So I'll just do a couple, show you how it's done. So you take the pen. Now it's, you can't see it, but it's laying down a wet fluid. And you just kind of put it where you want it. Then you're gonna take some of your embossing powder, whatever color you wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use white. Sprinkle some of it on the area. Don't worry if it gets outside of the area. All right, you're gonna sprinkle it on like that. You're gonna dump it off into a, a clean catch paper or in my case today, a paper plate, because that's what I have closest. I take it, hit it off. Okay, if it gets in other areas, you can brush it off. Uh, let's see here. Let's loosen it up a little bit. I get it all off of there. Now we're going to take either a blow dryer that blows hot air or a heat gun or an actual embossing gun. And we're going to heat it up and melt it. Takes only a couple of seconds once the heat starts coming out. And it's done that simple so I'll show you now and then I'll do one in gold see that so they sell all different colors of this stuff glitter uh, embossing powder that's glittery all different colors so and you see that this one here how there's a little area missing I can go over it again and emboss it again. So that's not a big deal. So now let me show you, on this one here, I'm gonna use gold. So we use the pen first. I'm gonna put all of these products in the um, description for you. Add the powder. Knock it off. Okay, so watch right here. All right, I don't know if you were able to see that change, but you can see now we have nice molten gold on there. And what I'll do is the areas that are still white, I'll go back and redo those, the little areas that I missed, just add a little bit more. And then go around and fix some, some leafery and all that. There I go with that word again, leafery. <laughs> leafery, leafery. 
So what I'm going to do next is finish embossing around this petal, these little circles here in between each of these. And then when I'll come back, go to the next part. What I'm doing here is I'm showing you each step that I'm doing, but not showing you me doing it on all the parts because it would just take way too long. And all you really need from this tutorial is to know how to do each step. You don't need to see me do it for everything, you know, such as the, the leaves. I showed you how to do uh, one or two, and then I did the rest of them, okay? So now it's time to add our dragonflies. I'm going to use the red from Vivid Intense uh, just to put the outline of the dragonfly on the, the canvas. Happiness, courage, love, and strength is what the red dragonfly represents. While that dries, okay, I'm just using this for an outline, okay? While that dries, I'm going to start doing some dotting in these areas where I did the original Dutch pour and it's kind of wispy on the end. I'm gonna do some yellow dotting in those to make those stand out a little more. This is going to be a magical, like kind of dragonfly garden when it's done in the end. That's the look that I'm going for. As you may be able to see, I work around in steps. Like I still have some leaves over here that I have to, to paint, uh, do the shading on and stuff. But what I do is I will put something like this dragonfly down and while that's wet, I'll work on a different area. So I kind of jump around and that kind of keeps me in the creative process. You know, if I sit and wait for each part to dry, then I just kind of lose my inspiration. So I keep going and, and working on, on different areas if I can. All right, so we have two ways to do this dotting. You can buy these really cool dotting paints from Folk Art. I have them in my description. Love these things because you just bing, 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 bing with them. Or you can put some acrylic paint on a paper plate and use a actual dotting tool. Um, don't mind my fish hook here. <laughs> I swear I'm not stitching anything, including myself. Um, you can use a dotting tool with acrylic paint. However, you want to make sure that you use a fluid type of acrylic paint to do dotting, not a, you know, heavy body kind of paint or medium body even. You want it to be fluid so it dots on there nice and easily. So I'll show you a couple here. I'll show you with the fluid paints because I know not everybody's gonna run out and buy these dotting paints even though they are magnificent. So put a little bit of paint out on your whatever you're using. Palette, whatever. Take your dotting tool dip it in there. Now I always like to test it out to make sure that's the right size because these things come in different sizes and the lighter you touch, the smaller the dot will be, the harder you press, the bigger it will be, okay? But they have, like that's the bigger end on this one and that's the smaller end. I'll make sure to link these in my description. So load up your tool Find the area you want to work with and just start pouncing them on. Just like that. See, I like the dotting paints because you don't have to keep going back to your puddle of paint and reloading your little tool. You just keep pouncing and pouncing. So let me show you this now with the dotting, dotting paint. So listen, if you buy these dotting paints and the tip becomes clogged, just take it and rinse it underneath the hot water, the uh, tip, take it off. Or do as I do, put it in a cup of hot water. There's a little tiny bit of dried paint that can sometimes get stuck up in the tip. 
but doing the hot water trick and letting it soak and then putting it back on, you can see it works fine. So that's why I like these because you see, I can keep just keep going. I don't have to worry about reloading. All right, so I'm going to kind of switch back and forth between the two yellows, fill in these, these leaf areas, or not leaf areas, but the areas that kind of resemble blown out wispy leaves on a Dutch pour. So that means like right here, over in these areas that I have not filled the lead, um, painted the leaves in yet, back behind these leaves, anywhere I feel like they'll look good, okay? So now I'm going to fill in the red dragonflies with some red paint. I'm going to use some primary elements to add some shimmer, even some Stickles glitter glue to give them some bling. So now I pulled out a little bit of pouring medium because I could not find my enamel. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of primary elements to these paints. This is a Harvest Moon color, gorgeous orangey copper color. And um, even though in the end the butterflies don't look this color, I wanted to add them. I'm adding different colors of primary elements on top of each other to get a multi-shifting effect. So this one here is actually called Amber Wing. So it's got a, a pink sort of hue to it. Um, once it's dry, you'll see that though. So next, once those are dry, I take my Stickles glitter glue and I put a little sparkle into the wings and the body. And then I even added some Swarovski crystals to the little antenna. So uh, this is just a really cute piece. I'm very happy with it. There's nothing I love more than crystals. I mean, they are so gorgeous. So I just used a little bit of the Stickles glitter glue to tack them down because I knew I was going to resin this piece and that will permanently hold them in place. They won't go anywhere. So I laid them down in the glue, let that dry. And then I came back with my KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Elite resin, the best of the best, and uh, did a nice top coat of that. Once it dries, I will be doing a second top coat. I like to do two top coats on my painting to give it a nice rounded edge. So there is a discount in the description for the resin also. And uh, so you're going to mix it together, equal parts. You get two bottles in the kit. You mix equal parts together for three minutes. And you go ahead and put it on your canvas. Massage the canvas with your hand. Rub it into the sides. This is the best way to get full coverage and not miss any spots. Just Get that gloved hand in there and go for it. Once you are done rubbing it in, you're going to give it a good torching and then you're going to put it to rest in a covered dust free zone for 24 hours. After 24 hours, if you want to do another coat, you can. Um, if not, you can remove the tape after 24 hours. After about four days, you're going to be able to, you know, move it around and feel safe that it's cured enough to pack it up and ship it out. So here we are. This is the finished piece. Once I turn the flash on, it's so pretty. All the shimmer from the original painting and the shimmer that I added in using the primary elements and the glitter glue. Also, the colors that I used live up to their name because they are intense. I love them. I hope you enjoyed learning some new techniques that you can incorporate into your acrylic pouring, including embossing your acrylic pour. I had a lot of fun doing that. 
So thank you for joining me. If you liked the video, please click like. Please subscribe if you are not already. I release a new video every Wednesday and Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes I run a little bit late because, you know, life and all. But uh, I try to get it there as close as possible. So in the description, you're going to see the links for all of my social media. Join our Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. Share your stencil slash embossed painting with me. I would love to see it. Thank you for joining me today. And until the next time, much love to you all and happy pouring.